Hi, good afternoon. God bless you. I know this week has been a rough week um, with some people um, that we don't um, particularly know personally, but we, we know of. And we pray for those people that um, the Lord strengthen them through this difficult time. Some people have lost lo loved ones this week, just passed. Um, over the last several weeks, they've been going through a lot. And other people are, are going through... Um, um, sicknesses, but we know that the word of God, um, that it's God's will for you to be healed. Jesus is our healer. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we just want to keep those people in, in, in mind that when we're praying, that we will also pray for these other people that are going through a difficult time. Because it's not, it's not easy. It's not easy. But I'm just thankful that we have the word of God that we can always go to. And knowing that Jesus is alive, he's alive today. And, and knowing that, that's what helps us to continue to, to move forward in the things of the Lord. Amen. So, we want to be mindful, speak the word over them continually, because the word is spirit and life. The word is truth. And we must trust and believe what God's word says, no matter what. Because God's word is a living word. Um, in John 6, I believe it says, he says, where my words that I speak, they're spirit and life. So, when we speak the word of God out of a pure heart, our sincere heart the word of God works and when we pray prayer is not just 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 coming to God with what we want to pray to him about or just our needs not that he's not concerned about that but we got to make sure we're praying according to God's will as well because that's just as as, as important sometimes we think we have things that we call right but it may not be right according to God's will or purpose in our lives but one way we can learn of the, God's purpose is to get into the Word of God and study the Word for ourselves and stay before Him in prayer and let the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us. Learn to hear the voice of the Lord because he, he is speaking to us every single day. But a lot of times if we're not paying attention or not aware of what God is doing, we miss a lot. But if we ask the Holy Spirit, who is our leader, in Jesus' name, to help us today, to help us to be good hearers, to help us not to miss what God had for us. Plead the blood over ourselves, over our mind, over our mouths, over our loved ones, over every area of our lives. Plead the blood of Jesus over us, over us because there is power in the blood of Jesus. Power to save, power to deliver, power to set free. There's power in the blood of Jesus. So when we, 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 we're mindful of the blood of Jesus and what he did for us, we can move in faith because God is faithful. He's always faithful. But a lot of times we miss things because we don't know how to hear from the Lord. We don't know. We, we're we not seeing what he's trying to show us. But if we stay in the word of God and stay prayerful, the Holy Spirit will help us to see what we need to see. To help us to speak when we need to speak. To help us to say the words that we need to say. To help us to, write, to, to make the right decisions. Because God is here and he loves us and he does care about us and, and he is concerned about everything that concerns us. He said for us to cast all our cares upon him because he cares for us. God cares for us. He cares for us. And it also said James that every good and perfect gift come from the Father of lights. With whom there is no variableness or shadow of, of, of turning. So that means he is a good God and every good thing come from him. He is the Father of lights. Amen. So God is good. And uh, you can read that in James chapter 1 to find out that God is the God of love. And he also wants us to have the wisdom that we need to go through this life, to go through this life's journey. Because we need it. There's, there's going to be a lot of things that come up as we live on this earth that we're going to need God to help us with. And we, we have to really lean on him like never before. Know him because he is our father. Those of us who are born again, we know that he is our father. And he is a loving father too, in Jesus' name. So I'm going to read today. I want to do the study today in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8 to 23. Some of you may know about Elijah and, and some of the things he did in the Bible. But this, this particular study talks about how Elijah trusted the Lord to um, save Israel from, from a trap. But also because he was trusting the Lord, the enemy was against him as well. But he trusted God and he knew who God was and he knew how to pray. And God answered his prayer. So I'm going to read 2 Kings chapter 6, 8-23. to The king of Aram 
was making war against Israel. I'm reading from the easy to read version. He made, he had a council meeting with his army officers. He said, go to such and such a place and prepare to attack the Israelites when they come by. So you see this, this king of Aram was, was planning to attack um, Israel's army. But the man of God sent a message to the king of Israel, Elijah, and said, Be careful. Don't go by that place because the, Aram the, the Aramean soldiers are hiding there. So God no doubt let Elijah know that he was to warn the king of Israel and tell them not to go a certain way that they were planning to go because the, 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 the king of Aram was planning to have his soldier attack them there. Okay, let's go to verse 10. The king of Israel sent a message to his men at that place that the man of God warned him about. And the king of Israel saved quite a few men. So because of that word that came from the Lord, God used Elijah to, to, to save uh, a few men of Israel from, from, from being killed. Because had they not known, they would have walked right into that trap. So we see God is concerned about his, his people and he kept them from that trap. Verse 11, the king of Iran was very upset about this. He called his army officers and said to them, tell me who is spying for the king of Israel. So he wanted to know who's spying for Israel, for Israel because they didn't fall into that trap. One of the officers of the king of Aram said, my lord and king, not one of us is a spy. Elijah, the prophet from Israel, can tell the king king of Israel many secret things even the words that you speak in your bedroom so we see Elijah was so close to the Lord that the Lord was just telling him things warning his people and this man no doubt heard that Elijah was used of the Lord because he said that God tells that, that that God was telling him many secret things that he was being told many secret things even um, even the secret things this king was speaking in his bedroom that, 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 that Elijah was able to know about. And the only way he was able to know about this because God, he, God was with him. And when God is with you, he would even give you the secrets of your enemies. He will, he will, um, he will protect his children. But you have to know God. You have to trust him. And sometimes even with the enemies, they think they got things hidden. And naturally they do. But when you pray and know how to trust God, God, God will reveal the secrets of the enemies. Because God is a God of just justice, and He and and He and He does not take pleasure in um, iniquity, or He does not take pleasure in evil plans at all. And some people think when they when they're gonna plan to do evil that they they're gonna do this thing, oh that thing, and after they do that, oh God forgive me. But let me tell you something. God is looking at your heart. If you're planning to do something wrong and then think I'm going to ask God to forgive me because God forgives people, then that's that's the wrong thing to do. It's good that you run to the Lord. You know, you do wrong, you make a mistake. It's good that you run to Him. We all should run to Him. But don't plan to do evil and premeditate, I'm going to do this and do this wrong thing just to get my way. Then after it's all done, I'm going to say, oh God, forgive me. You know, thank God that He forgives us. But you, but when you repent, we repent from a pure heart. You know, do what is right because it's right to do. And it doesn't mean that you or me or anybody else cannot make a mistake. Because we all can make mistakes. We all can. We all have. And as long as we live on this earth, we will make mistakes. But don't premeditate. Don't plan, I'm going to do this evil thing and do that evil thing to this person or hurt this person or take this from this person. Then I'm going to go, oh God, forgive me. Because God is looking at that. And he judged from the heart. Man would judge from the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart of the person. So let's plan to do what's right because it's right to do. Because when we do things and premeditate to do wrong, we can open up doors of evil to come into our life that we don't want to go through. And when, when payback time comes, it is not good. It is not a good thing when it, when it happens. And it's a horrible thing when it, when it happens. So let's do what's right because it's right to do. Because whatever we sow, we're going to reap, whether it's good or, or bad, whether it's um of good intentions or evil intentions, we're, we're going to reap what we sell. So let us sow good seeds so we can reap good in our life. Let the harvest be good. Amen. God knows everything. We can't hide nothing from him. He knows your heart. He knows your thoughts before it even comes to your mind. He knows it. So let's be honest with God. If we have a problem in a certain area, it's the Lord help us in that area to get it right because we all need help. So I'm going to continue reading. Okay. 
Um, so one of the officers, verse 12, of the king of Aram said, My lord and my king, not one of us is a spy. Elijah, the prophet of Israel, can tell the king of Israel many secrets, even the words that you speak in your bedroom. The king of Aram said, Find Elijah, and I will send men to catch him. The servants told the king of Aram, Elijah is in Dothan. Then the king of Aram sent horses, chariots, and, and a large army to Dothan. They arrived at night and surrounded the city. Elijah's servant got up early that morning. When he went outside, he saw an army with horses and chariots all around the city. The servant said to Elijah, Oh, my master, what can we do? Elijah said, Don't be afraid. The army that fights for us is larger than the army that fights for our end. So Elijah told him, don't be afraid. Elijah knew something. He knew the Lord. He said the army that is fighting for us is larger or greater than the army that is out there that came against us. That's what Elijah told his servant. He said, don't be afraid. He said, don't be afraid. And you know what? When we have God on our side, we have all the power that we need on our side. Amen. He, we have the angels of the Lord fighting for us. We have the Holy Spirit. We have Jesus, the Son of God, on our side. I mean, I don't care how many people, even if the whole world came against you, if you have God on your side, you have a great army on your side. Amen? So we're going to continue reading. We're going to continue reading. Verse 17. Then Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I, I ask you, open my servant's eyes so they so that he can see. So Elijah prayed to the Lord to open his servant's eyes so he can see. The Lord opened the eyes. See, the Lord honored Elijah's prayer. He said, the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. So he was a young man, a young servant. And the servant saw the mountain full of horses and a chariot of fires. The angels of the Lord were on horses. They were ready to fight. Amen. They were all around Elijah. Even Elijah, where, where, where he was, inside, if he was inside the building at the time or home, the angels was all surrounded in that home around him and all outside. They were all out there. The horses and the chariots of fire came down to Elijah. He prayed to the Lord and said, I pray that you will cause these people to become blind. So Elijah prayed that God would blind the eyes of these, these enemies, these soldiers that were fighting against them. So God did what Elijah asked. So see, God answered his prayer. He, he, he honored his prayer. You can see all through these verses that God was just doing miracle after miracle. When he revealed to Elijah to tell the king of Israel, don't let the army go through this way or that way because the, the king of Aram was planning to send his soldiers this way. It'll be a trap. When, when, when um, the servant came and, and he was afraid and he told him, don't be afraid. And God opened the eyes. That's another miracle that he was able to see in the spiritual realm that the angels was there to fight for them. And now he prays for God to blind these soldiers because, because they were coming down to the city where Elijah was at. He, he prayed to the Lord and said, I pray that you will cause these people to become blind. So God did what Elijah asked. He caused the Aramean army to become blind. So they became blind. Elijah said to, to the Aramean army, this is not the right way. This is not the right city. Follow me. I will lead you to the man you're looking for. Then Elijah led them to Samaria. When they arrived at Samaria, Elijah said, Lord, open the eyes of, of these men so that they can see. So he prayed again. He said, Lord, open their eyes. They were blind when he led them. When they got to where they were going, to Samaria, he prayed again and asked God to open their eyes so they can see, these soldiers' eyes so they can see. Then the Lord, what did he do? Then the Lord opened their eyes and the Aramean army saw they were in the city of Samaria. So God honored his prayer again and opened his eyes. So you can see miracles happening uh, as Elijah prayed, as he trusted the Lord through this difficult time. The king of Israel saw the Aramean army and said to Elijah, My father, should I kill them? Should I kill them? So as soon as the king of Israel saw them, he said, Should I kill them? He was ready to kill them. Now let's see what Elijah says. Elijah says, No, don't kill them. They are not soldiers you capture in battle. Give them some bread and water. Let them eat and drink. Then let them go home to their leader. So Elijah spared their lives. He had mercy on them. Even though they, they came there to kill him. But God used him to have mercy on them. Amen. So even though we have enemies out there who will kill us. Who will try to steal from us. Who will try to destroy us. 
ask, we, we need to ask God for us to have mercy upon them, to forgive them. Because the main purpose in this life is to make it into heaven. Amen? And not only make it into heaven, but do what God has called us to do. And sometimes people allow the Satan to blind them where they can't see that they're wrong. They're wrong as can be, but they can't see it. They think they're right. They believe they're right. Just like Paul, when he was on the road to Damascus, he was he was thought he was doing God's favor by killing the Christians and killing people. You know, he thought he, thought he was doing it in, in the name of the Lord, but he was not. When he was struck down, his eyes were open and he realized he was fighting against Jesus. And a lot of times people think they're doing right. And don't realize they're fighting against God's will. They're fighting against God's plan. And don't even seem to realize it. So when we pray for people, even our enemies, we pray God open our eyes so they can see. Open our eyes so they can see in time. Because we got to realize that God is a living God. And He is real. He is real. And He does have plans for each and every one of our lives. And purposes for us to do. To accomplish on this earth. And we got to make sure that when we're doing things, make sure that we're doing for the Lord and not for people people make a lot of mistakes because they're doing it for the wrong reasons I've heard people say we're doing it from this person we're doing it because of this reason we're doing it because of that reason and God is not in that anytime a person have to lie had to set traps have to deceive other people so they so they will side with them to think that they're doing right God is not in that God is a God of truth and God don't need lies to, 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 to get his plans accomplished. He don't need it. But you see people, there's people out there that, that call themselves, I'm, I'm working for the Lord. I'm doing this for the Lord. They're out there lying. They're out there destroy, trying to destroy people. And, don't, and some realize it and some don't. Only God can judge the heart of that person. There's people out there doing all kinds of things like that and don't realize that one day they will have to answer to God. And, and the way things are happening in these last days, things are happening real quick. People are answering real quick. So we just want to make sure everything that we do, everything that we say, that we're in line with the Word of God. Now it doesn't mean you're not going to make mistakes. It doesn't mean that I, I don't make mistakes. But we repent and change and turn around and do what's right because it's right to do. And, and, and I'm going to tell you one thing. We can't hide wrong. We can't hide it. We, we, we can, sometimes people can lie to people and deceive people for a while. And, and because they really like this person or they trust this person and thank this person. Oh, I like this person. So, so they're going to believe what they're saying. No, you better believe what God says. You better find the truth out for yourself. Because in the end, it's only truth going to stand. It's not a lie. A lie is going to fall apart. It's only time. In, in time, that lie will fall apart. And I've seen it happen over and over again. So I'm, it's important to just make sure you're in truth and make sure you're following the ways of the Lord. As you can see, this king of uh, um, uh, Aram, I'm sorry, uh, the king of Aram, that's right. He was not fighting fighting on God's side. He was, he, was, he, was, he was the enemy of Israel. Israel were the people of God. And he was fighting against the people of God and God protected his people. And the same... As it says in the, the word of God that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same today, too. He's going to fight for his people. He loved his children. And, and as long as we trust God as the children of God, and we pray and trust God, God will reveal things to us that we need to know when we need to know it. He gives us the wisdom for every situation. He, he, he will give it to us as we need it. Amen. Praise the Lord. He will fight for us. And, and he have angels all around us. We may not be able to see with our physical eyes, but when he does open our spiritual eyes, he have angels all around us fighting for us, making sure that we're walking in that purpose and destiny that he planned for each and every one of us. So my word today for you is to trust the Lord, trust the Lord, and know that you win when you have God on your side. You have, you will, he says, I, I have um, overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. He's our, he's, he's our Lord. And we, and when we trust God and we pray in the name of Jesus, there's power in the name of Jesus. We can know that when we pray according to the, to the will of God, according to his word, that we have the answers that we need. Amen. Praise the Lord. So all we have to do is trust God. When you're going through, it may not feel good. It may not look good. It may not sound good but you got to know that as long as you have God on your side when, when it's all finished and done you already won 
You're already one. You have victory through Christ Jesus. So God sees and knows everything. He hears everything. Even um, he can hear the secrets in, in, in bedrooms. He can hear the secrets behind closed doors. He can hear the secrets anywhere. People, if you're not serving the Lord, he will reveal those secrets to his people. Amen. So all we got to do is trust God. Don't worry about what people are doing. If you have God on your side, you have everything you need. Because he will send his angels to protect you. And they will protect us. Amen. They will protect us. And God always reveal the secrets of the enemies. So we just thank God for um, giving us victory today. We thank God that we continue to walk in victory. We thank God for miracles. We thank God for, for healing through Jesus Christ. Because by the stripes of Jesus we were healed. We thank God for just uh, being such a loving God. So I just want to pray for you. Be blessed today. And I also want to pray the prayer of salvation. It's very simple. If you mean it from your heart, you can say these words with me. Say, so, Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe you died and rose again. And I want you to be my Lord today. I thank you for my salvation. I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. Thank you, Father, for my salvation. I give you praise. And Lord, I thank you for the Holy Spirit, who is the leader who will guide me, who will teach me, who will not leave me comfortless. He is now my comforter in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for my Lord Jesus Christ, who is my Lord now. I thank you, Father, that I am now in the kingdom of God. Thank you, Father, for revealing to me my destiny. Thank you, Father, as I continue on on my journey, that I, I, that I am not alone. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for my Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Be blessed today. Amen.